What's going on guys, Merc Squad TV here, and we got another video about Season 2, Modern Warfare 2, man. So let's get up into it, let's see what they got. It looks like Activision and Infinity War gave us a little tease of what's coming, and let's see how we are going to take this information. Is it going to be good, something that players want, or is this just stuff that really nobody cares about, man? Because honestly, this game's in a bad state, so let's see what the hell's going on, man. And if you guys would, like and subscribe to the video, man. I'm fresh out whack into some sarah j man so i'm hot let's get into it already got it down packed already got it loaded you know so here we go this is the road map to season two this pretty much looks like everything we're gonna be getting so it looks like we're getting a little bit of the war zone asika island which i covered in the last video it looks like we're getting some new weapons new missions and things like that so it looks pretty interesting so let's see what the hell we working with boy Click on that link right there. Okay. So it says Forge Your Path in Season 2 of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, and Modern Warfare Warzone. Launching February 15th. All right. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay. 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 So it looks like we got some Warzone 2 stuff. I already went over this. If you guys uh, are interested in that, uh, check out my last video and um, you guys can get into it. But it looks like we got some new photos coming from Warzone 2.0 and dmz modes it looks like they're doing new contracts search and seizures uh it looks like they're going to be doing new public events data heist and stuff like that so we're going to have heist and dmz and warzone that's going to be pretty cool uh, additional new features let's see what they got um it says season two will include several notable changes to warzone 2.0 including an updated gulag that will host 1v1 duels man i know so many people wanted this man because uh, a lot of people was not really liking the 2v2 because half of the time they would get teammates that is idle or that's not playing and then it would be a 2v1 and then it would not be fair so i think in some situations some people like the 2v2s but i think in uh solos it should have been 1v1s off the top man i don't think it should have been 2v2 but that's just my opinion man let me know if you guys agree looks like we got some redeploy drones man this looks like something fresh off of fortnite looks like you can just hook up onto them and you can basically fly to a different destination or whatever um it just looks like they're just copying stuff from different games like i said popular titles fortnite and stuff like that not really a fan man because it's really kind of unrealistic it kind of gives away from the call of duty vibe man um, but if you guys like the redeploy drones and you like what this is saying it says the redeploy drones the high-tech successor of the redeploy balloons you first used on Kodera are the high risk high reward way to reposition around Asika Island to be deployed during season two to use a redeploy drone simply hook a cable up to the drone via interaction after ascending to where the drone is hovering in the sky an operator will be launching the direction they are facing allowing them to parachute down safely to a distant location while ascending operators can rotate around the cable to best position themselves for launch and they can hip fire weapons and detach at any point okay so like i said man this is just some like uh um tom clancy uh splinter cell type stuff man you're sitting there holding on a on a rope and as you can see he's actually is uh hooked onto the cable and he's shooting at this helicopter man so like i said i mean just way bizarre stuff man i don't i'm not really a fan of that um but we'll see how it plays out man um let's see we got new combatant rusher and season resurgence okay it says uh so far all combatants are about dealing damage from a distance unless otherwise provoked to swing wildly with the butt of their gun during season two a new type of combatant joins their marks to fulfill that extreme close quarters uh combat role so it says the rusher the rusher may not have much in terms of health or armor but what they lack in defense they make up for in increased agility and a deadly short sword this adversary also packs a pistol in a case a target is unreachable for a melee attack as well as many smoke bombs to use for repositioning um, rushers are meant to be downed just as quickly as they sprint especially in confined and indoor spaces where they are most effective expecting to hit the ground running in resurgence mode with ai only appearing under certain conditions such as during a data heist so it looks like they're gonna have a new type of ai that is basically like a damn ninja um probably gonna be way more annoying uh to run into um 
So basically they just run up towards you and they try to stab you and they got smoke bombs and stuff like that. So it looks like they're taking a lot of stuff from like Ghost of Tsushima. This is like a Jap Japanese update. So like I said, I mean, it looks like they're trying to, you know, make these guys look like samurai or whatever. Um, here we go. Uh, Discover secrets of a Sika Island. Already been through that. Expansion 6, a Sika Island, new crown faction. Okay, so we got new factions coming. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh new boss we got the bomb maker so i guess this is the bomb maker has a new boss and it comes with a weapons case and stuff so maybe you have to complete it to get a weapon and uh point of interest it looks like they're adding different points to the map of al mazara okay and this is there's spicy stuff right here man this is what i'm worried about man the Modern warfare 2 overview man let's see what the hell they're going to be doing man they also release what they're going to be fixing and stuff too we're going to be getting into that as well so let's see man let's see because honestly man right now like i said the game is kind of boring it's kind of dead it's not really a lot of content and the gameplay is horrible so let's see it says prove your skills in rank play so we're getting rank play okay finally built off previous iterations one for two rank play offers plenty of rewards and bragging rights to those most dedicated to being the best operator in multiplayer two core maps two battle maps so we're getting about four maps okay battlegrounds in al Mazra and spain will be ready for multiplayer infiltrations at season two launch so when it comes launch that's when ranked play is going to come now for third person players i don't know if we get in ranked play hopefully we do but if not i guess it's only going to be a first person exclusive a half dozen modes infected gun game and grind to be available at launch drop zone one in the chamber and all or nothing uh set to start the party in season also the return of hardcore okay so 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 hold on hold on, hold on. they're not adding hardcore to the game when season two launches so they're adding infected gun game and grind to be available at launch but drop zone one in the chamber and all or nothing set to start the party in season I don't understand what the hell that means, man. But honestly, why is hardcore going to have to wait till like midlife of the season, man? That is ridiculous. So many people requested hardcore mode and for them to sit here and already say it's not going to be a exclusive at launch. I mean, that's stupid, man. What the hell, man? People do not want the tier one mode. So what? There's not gonna have. They're, they're not gonna have any tier one mode or anything uh, for the hardcore player base to play until uh, the start the, to set to start the party in season. What the hell does that even mean, man? Like this is what I'm talking about, man. They like try to trick you with their wording. All right, but we all know it says a half dozen modes right here. It says infected gun game and grind to be available at launch. So that means that those three game modes are going to be available at launch. But Drop Zone, One in the Chamber, All or Nothing, set to start the party in season. Also, the return of Hardcore. So, like I said, man, it looks like, honestly, man, I'm pretty sure if you're a Hardcore fan, you're pretty pissed about this information. I mean, like I said, there, there have been so many people that's been complaining about the Tier 1 mode and that they just want Hardcore mode to come back. And now they're sitting there saying it's going to be later in the season. That is fucking ridiculous man i cannot believe that shit so uh let's get to it it says get ready for ranked play it says those who claim uh the best in Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer will have to prove it in ranked play a new multiplayer experience built in collaboration with treyarch and the call of duty league so it looks like we got some little sweat matches man if you guys are real good at call of duty uh i'll see you guys in ranked play man um looks like you get some new skins and stuff if you play it as well um this future packed standalone competitive multiplayer mode uses cdl approved rules so you got to play by the cdl league approved rules restrictions maps and modes all while rewarding players with exclusive items and visible skill ranks to show off with pride okay so that's cool so we're getting skill ranks okay what else are we getting it says work your way up through seven skill divisions from bronze to iridescent all the way up to 250 where your name will be displayed on a special top 250 leaderboard earn skill division skins based on your highest rank for the season including a set for finishing a season in the gold division or above for the first time as well as unique rewards given out each season now honestly man this stuff sounds good it sounds competitive it sounds fun but this is the problem the problem is is that uh these leaderboards and everything are probably going to be taken over by people that's cheating on the game so honestly man these leaderboards if if if, if that is the case which it has been the case every time they try to add rank play 
it's honestly not even going to be wor- worth it, man, because until they fix the cheater problem and until they fix the people ch- hacking and stuff like that on the game, it, it you know, it's just not going to be fun to play, man, honestly. So, I mean, it, it sounds good, but honestly, this game needs so much work at the, at the point where it's at that, uh, honestly, I don't see this thing being like a fair game mode. I just see it as basically it being abused by people who's running cheats and stuff like that. So let's get rid. I mean, let's read a little bit more into it. It says, as you fight to increase that skill rating, you also climb through a separate set of rank play ranks, one through fifty. This does not reset with each season. That's good. Every start, every everyone starts at rank one and can climb towards rank fifty by winning matches to earn stars. So it's kind of it's going to be just like the co-op uh, thing. Like if you ever played co-op, you got to basically beat the missions in certain time zones, and if you beat them in those specific time zones, you get one to three stars. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be like that, um, but a little bit more different based on the multiplayer aspect. So it says with each win equaling, equaling one star earned. So every time you win, you get one star. Every five ranks will update the player's rank icon and will award a set of exclusive rank play rewards. Okay, that's pretty cool, including skins at rank 5 and 50. Okay, so that's pretty sweet. So you rank from, everybody starts at rank 1, and basically you have to win matches to earn stars and based on how many stars you get you rank up from rank 5 to rank 50 along with other rewards so that's pretty cool and i'm pretty sure that these are the skins um this probably is like one of the higher skins this is i think this is the skin that everybody would get at level five it looks like because it says ranked play on the hoodie and everything like that so it looks pretty all right i mean not really too crazy about the skin but honestly man i mean free skins you can't really complain about it um but like i said man hopefully this game mode is not going to be uh harassed by a bunch of cheaters and people who's playing unfairly but like i said most likely how call of duty is in the state of right now it probably is man honestly so i mean it is a good concept but uh we'll have to see what all they have uh working um with that type of game mode because like i said man um it's just too many sleazy stuff and honestly i'm not really seeing anything about third person like hopefully there is a ranked for third person because like i said some people play third person like me and uh we kind of would like different game modes man let's uh so so hopefully they do add it for third person as well but most likely they probably won't okay so the next thing is we got four maps for multiplayer at launch okay okay finally we get some new maps man so let's see what the hell these maps is okay so it looks like we got uh, core map and ground war operators get ready to deploy more locals around Al Masra in Spain in season two. Okay, so we got Dome coming back. Okay, Dome is a map from Armor for Three. Honestly, I'm not too crazy about it, um, but uh, I mean it is a decent map. It's probably better than the maps that they have in the game right now. But um, honestly, man, um, I mean if you guys play the co-op, you can play like a mini. You can play like the map that looks just like Dome. Um, so honestly, man, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a reskin. It doesn't really seem like it's going to be something that they're, you know, exclusive for season two. It seemed, it was in the game since launch. I mean, you could have played it in co-op. So honestly, um, fr- from me playing that map, I'm not really too crazy about it. Um, but we'll have to see how it plays in multiplayer because sometimes they, you know, change stuff up. So, I mean, we'll just, like I said, we'll just see, but honestly, Mama for three dome was a good map. But um, those maps for Marvel for 3, the rest of the maps, I mean, Marvel for 3 had some horrible maps. So, I mean, probably Dome was probably the only good map that it had. But uh, other than that, um, let's see what else we have. So, we have the Dome coming out, okay? And we have the Ob- Observatory coming out. This is a Ground War map, okay? So, we got two more we got two more ground war maps which is pretty cool i like ground war ground war is pretty fun um, i'm glad they're adding more maps to it so that looks pretty sweet it looks like it's in that dome area as you can see you can see the dome right here um and you can see like the little desert area so this looks like it's going to be like uh the same part of dome um but it's going to be in a uh, ground war form um we have the al malik international battle map okay so this kind of looks like in the same setting in desert and stuff so i mean we already got like three or four maps in the desert so i mean honestly uh not really too crazy about this it looks pretty much like the same map but 
I mean, we'll just see how it plays out. It just looks like they're taking like uh, li little pieces from the bigger map of Al Mazra and basically making it into a ground war, which kind of makes sense. I thought it was going to be like a new, new location, but um, you know, whatever, it just seems cool. So now we have, and we also have the museum map. Now, a lot of people were saying that this map uh, they took out because of the problem of them basically uh, copying and pasting it from like a real world museum. So honestly, I guess that they fixed this. Some people were saying that this is one of the reasons why they delayed season two because the map didn't get approved yet and they were just trying to make sure they were good at run. Well, basically not gonna be able to get sued if they did put it back in the game. So, so basically, I guess they worked that out. So we'll have to see how the museum map uh, shows out. I mean, if you guys did play the beta, I think the museum map was in the game. Um, so, I mean, like I said, this is all just content. It just seems like this is all content that has already in the game. It doesn't seem like anything fresh. Uh, like I said, the dome map, that was already in co-op. You can already see that map already in the game. So that's not something that's really new to the table. And the museum was a map that I believe was in beta. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now we have infected gun game, um, headline, returning modes. Okay, now... If you guys really like Infected, I mean, that's fine. I'm not really too crazy about Infected. I don't think it's like a like a game changer. I don't think it would make or break a game. Um, honestly, I think Hardcore is something that's real important. Um, but uh, I just can't really believe how they're stating that Hardcore isn't going to come at the launch of Season 2. It's going to come like later in the party. So uh, if, if that's true... Activision and Infinity War, man, you guys are messing up, man. You guys are messing up big time. And uh, honestly, uh, we'll just have to see how this plays. Um, I mean, honestly, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to make this game like Modern Warfare 3? Or is this supposed to be Modern Warfare 2? Because why is all this stuff coming from Modern Warfare 3? We got Dome coming. We got Infected coming, which was a Modern Warfare 3 uh, game mode. Um, we got Gun Game. Um, like I said, man, I'm not really too crazy about these modes, man. Uh, I would never, I don't think I would play gun game. Um, grind, what is grind? I think grind was from Modern Warfare 3 too. The third mode uh, whose roots trace back to Modern Warfare 3, grind is kill confirmed with an added twist. Enemy dog tags are stackable and must be uh, banked at one to f of two fixed locations. Okay, yeah, so basically it's basically like you pick up the dog tags and then in order for you to claim them you have to drop them off at like these drop points you see like these arrows right here you have to go into the arrows and drop these off so you pick them up and then you go towards your circle to drop them off if you don't drop them off then you spill them all now honestly man i mean basically kill confirmed it's just kill confirmed with a twist that's it i mean not really anything new coming out man this is my word as you can see the third mode whose roots trace back to Modern Warfare 3. Is this Modern Warfare 3 or is this Modern Warfare 2 2023? Like, I mean, what, why don't y'all just save all this Modern Warfare 3 content for Modern Warfare 3 when y'all done with Modern Warfare 2? Because I'm pretty sure y'all gonna make a Modern Warfare 3. There's already hints that y'all have the Modern Warfare 3 characters coming in the game and everything like that. So why don't y'all just wait for Modern Warfare 3 to come out to release all this stuff, man? Like, because nobody's really a big fan of this, man. They, I mean, if you go back to Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3 is not a very successful Call of Duty. A lot of people did not like that Call of Duty. And one of the reasons was because it was made by Sledgehammer Games that uh, in history makes horrible Call of Duties. Okay, so honestly man like for them to sit here and add all this stuff it just lets you know who's getting in charge of this game man sledgehammer games uh just like they said infinity war was only going to be working like a year on this game or the first season and then sledgehammer games was going to start taking it over and it looks like sledgehammer games is already trying to force their way in here by bringing all their old modes into this game man and it's it's not built for it, man i don't think it's i don't think it's something that needs to be uh wasted i think they need to add fresh new content that people like man instead of like uh game modes that you know people aren't really too crazy about man like okay you you, you add uh you add grind you add um gun game and you add uh what's the what's the other one infected but you can't add hardcore at the beginning okay so it, right here it says hardcore launch so let's see let's see okay okay let's see man let's see let's see as previous announced the hardcore playlist will return in place of tier one playlist at the start of season two okay 
All right, all right. So I, I back my words. I back my words. All right, my bad, my bad, my bad. So it looks like we is getting a hardcore playlist will return in place of tier one players at the start of season two. Okay, okay. So now up there, as you can see, they did not word that like that. They did not word that like that. I'm gonna go back up just to make sure, man. I'm gonna go back up just to make sure. Okay. So it says a half dozen modes: infected, gun game, and grind to be available at launch. Okay. It says these three game modes to be available at launch. So why would they word it like this when it says drop zone, one in the chamber, all and all or nothing set to start party in season, also the return of hardcore. Why would they word that like that if then they're going to come down here and say, oh, hardcore is going to be available at launch. See, tricky words, man. Can't trust them. Can't trust them. All right. So look, here we go. Hardcore, as previously announced, the Hardcore playlist will return in place of Tier 1 playlist at the start of Season 2. So does that mean at launch? Now it says launch right here. It says start of Season 2. The initial Hardcore playlist will feature a mix of traditional modes with the classic rule set veterans of the franchise are familiar with, including decreased health that cannot be replenished outside of stem shots, as well as a limited HUD. Whether you appreciate a more realistic first-person uh, experience or you want a place to hit those long shots for platinum camos head into hardcore and be sure to watch your six okay all right all right all right now tier one mode was kind of weak man like they're, they're like you know like i said they're trying to cater to these new players man and they're forgetting that the people who built this billion dollar franchise is the people who've been playing this game for years so the tier one game mode was something that nobody asked for. It was ridiculous. It was horrible. Um, and it, it really made no sense. It was just basically like an easier hardcore. And nobody wants an easier hardcore. Okay, so I'm glad that they're making this hardcore change. As you can see, they're still switching up their words. Okay, it says, um, as previously announced, the hardcore playlist will return in place of tier one playlist at the start of season two. Okay, so this is at the start of season two. But then at the top, it says... Uh, it comes in a later party so like i said i don't really know if it's coming at launch it says right here hardcore launch so i don't know if they mean that that's going to be coming in launch or what because anything else okay grind launch okay gun game launch infected launch okay okay so it looks like it is going to come in launch all right so i don't know why they would word it like that okay so here we go drop zone in season okay so this is going to be coming a little bit later in um, drop zone, another Modern Warfare 3, Ma another Modern Warfare 3 mode uh, for Modern Warfare 2. Cure package lovers look no further. Drop zone is another classic mode that debuted in Modern Warfare 3. Uh, uh, derivable hard point drop zone sends a care package down and occupied drop zone area every 15 seconds. Perfect for those wanting to ramp up their kill streak elimination numbers or who just love pure chaos. Yeah, who the hell wants to play this game mode? You, you, like this is not gonna be fun man yeah drop care packages all over the place so that basically noobs can sit here and shoot you with ac 130s and chopper gunners yeah i don't really see too many core players playing this game mode uh but if you guys like stuff like that uh have fun but you will not be seeing me playing something like that and like i said another thing like i said debut it in Modern Warfare 3. I already knew this was a Modern Warfare 3 game mode, but like I said, they're adding all these Modern Warfare 3 game modes. Where is the classic Modern Warfare 2 game modes at? Right? So, honestly, man, like I said, it just seems like instead of this game being Modern Warfare 2 2022, this is Modern Warfare 3. So, like I said, man, I'm not, you know, I'm not really too happy about all this stuff, but um let's see. All or nothing in season, that's a game mode, one in the chamber raids episode season two coming this season that's pretty cool okay 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 do we get anything though do we get does it tell you if we get anything okay um price fire and guys will be back in later season two with episode two of the raids a con a continuation of the Modern Warfare two campaign prepare to squad up for whatever gauntlet lies ahead even if it means finding unlucky allies to help tie up those loose ends okay okay all right, so now we got the general overview, all right? So that's pretty much everything we getting. We getting raids. We getting new modes from Modern Warfare 3, okay? We getting hardcore, about damn time, at launch, that it's saying, okay? 
We're getting grind. We're getting gun game. We're getting infected. We're getting four new multiplayer maps. Two of those maps are going to be small maps that you can play like 6v6 in. So we got Museum and we got Dome. I wouldn't count those as new maps. The Museum is from beta and Dome has been in this game since the launch of it, as you can tell, because it's already was in the game when you play co-op. So honestly, man, I'm not too excited about this. Not really too excited because it looks like it's the same stuff over and over again. Um, it doesn't look like they're really adding anything different, but let's go ahead and get into the rest of the content right here. Okay, so um, as you can see, we got the general overview. Okay, let's get into what we're going to be uh, walking into the Path of the Ronin launch event. So Path of the Ronin season challenges, we're getting some new challenges. Uh, we got a Ronin returns with an arsenal, okay, and we got new personal watercraft vehicle, which is the jet ski that we saw in the trailer in the last video. Okay, now if you guys don't know who this is, from what I believe, I think that this is Kruger, because Kruger he wears this uh, hood over his hat all the time and it's blacked out. So I mean, if he's coming back, that's pretty damn cool. I would like that. Um, it says at the beginning of season two, the path of Ronin challenges. Okay, so we get some new challenges, and we can even uh, unlock stuff if we complete them in Warzone 2 or Mon for 2 based on the seven virtues of Bushido. Okay, and this is basically the seven things. Um, each challenge comes with a reward for completion, such as a green screen. Um, I mean, not a green screen, a damn gun screen or a weapon charm, homie. So, guess what? We get some new gun screens and weapon charms, okay? Uh, I mean, if you guys like the different gun screens, that's fine. Um, if you guys ain't really too crazy about it, you know, really, man, we'll just see how grindy these, uh, you know, we'll see how grindy these, um, challenges are, man. And if they're worth a damn gun screen or a weapon charm, then yeah, I'll do some. But if they're not, then, uh, you know, I ain't really gonna be worrying about it. Now, we got the five new weapons, okay? Now, this, this is gonna make or break it for me, man. This is gonna make it or break it. Now, I can already see we got the crossbow right here, Okay. Now, for the first weapon, as you know, we got the little small katanas, okay? Small swords, okay? Um, we're going to see how those work because right now the melee system in this game is broken. Hopefully, they fix it with Season 2 because, honestly, for somebody to just run around with a knife and just press the, the trigger button to stab you with no animation and you just fall down makes no damn sense, man. So, let's go ahead and get into it. So, we got... The ISO Hemlock Assault Rifle, okay, another assault rifle, I feel like there's already too many damn assault rifles in the game, um, but honestly, what's going to harm it to bring another one in, it says a powerful and enhanced rifle from Expedite Firearms is designed to take both 5.56 and subsonic 300 BLK ammunition, so this is probably going to be the only assault rifle that can shoot subsonic rounds, which is pretty good, because um, honestly, there's no assault rifle in the game that can do that from which I know yet. So that is pretty good. Um, let's see. Providing battlefield advantage in any situation. Okay. So that's pretty good. How to unlock free weapon with the season two battle pass. Okay. So you basically will get this weapon inside the battle pass. All right. So let's see what else we got. We got the broadside shotgun. Another semi-automatic shotgun. Let's get it. So this is what I wanted, man. I needed an automatic shotgun, man, because honestly... The shotguns in this game are booty. All they do is give you a hit marker, even if you're close range. For a pistol to kill somebody in two to one shots, why the hell is a shotgun not killing you in the first shot when you ultimately hit them in their body? I do not understand. But honestly, hopefully this fucking shotgun is not a hit marker king. Hopefully it does do justice, man, and it does make it to where the game mode is a lot I mean, basically, the game is a lot more playable with shotguns because right now, honestly, man, shotguns are fun to use. But honestly, man, like I said, for them to be like a gamble with the shots, uh, it, it honestly, uh, you know, it kind of it, it, it pisses me off most of the time. So um, as somebody who uses shotguns, I'm looking real forward to using this shotgun. We're going to see how it works. OK, so it says bringing the power of a 12 gauge to the cast off platform. The KV broadside is the fastest firing semi-auto firearm in a shotgun class. Destroy targets at close range with imp impunity. Okay, so let's see how this shotgun is going to turn out, man. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be trash? Hopefully it's good. Um, it probably isn't going to have a lot of range because usually with the semi-auto fire shotguns, they try to limit the range. So 
I mean, that's fine with me, but as long as they can get the job done in close range instead of just hit marker after hit marker, I'm fine with that. But other than that, it seems like we're going to get a new shotgun. Finally, we get a semi-auto. I wish it was the AA-12, but it's going to be the cast-off uh, broadside, okay? So now we got the uh, katanas. We get a closer look. We got the Japanese symbol on them, so it looks pretty smooth. Um, like I said, it's just going to really matter of how you kill somebody with them man because if they're just running around and they're just doing one slice animation and killing you i think it's stupid i think they need to fix it because honestly man for somebody to just run up on you with a knife and just swipe you one time with no effort is ridiculous man stupid so hopefully they fix that but if they don't then that's going to be another troll weapon that people are going to be using uh and they're going to be taking advantage of just to basically troll people um the next thing is the crossbow crossbow marksman rifle um hopefully this is a one-shot weapon i'm pretty sure it is gonna be but um i mean we're gonna have to see i mean because i'm pretty sure it's gonna be like a slow reload uh but we would have to see like uh what like is the ranges of this gun and like if it's gonna be useful on the battlefield and, and, and if it's even gonna be something that is gonna be worth using in the game or just something that's going to be fun to use i mean crossbow is fun but is it worth using a crossbow uh when you're fighting against people who's using semi-automatic snipers or assault rifles and stuff like that because you only get that one shot to kill somebody and then you have to reload so honestly we're gonna have to see how this plays out we're gonna have to see how it works um so yeah, i'm pretty excited about it but we'll have to see so it says silent and agile this high performance crossbow fires uh 20.0 bolts with expressional lethality i don't know what that word is man exclusive customization distant functionality and unique ammunition types put this weapon in a class of its own standard 20.0 bolts are recoverable and are undetected by trophy system how to unlock complete all seven paths of the ronin event challenges are purchased via store bundle yes so i wonder how i wonder how hard it's going to be to complete all seven of these ronin event challenges because honestly this is the only way you will get the crossbow or uh, of course you can porch you can purchase it in a store bundle and i can guarantee you that store bundle is going to be 19.99 okay all right so um it looks like we got the melee weapons at launch how do we unlock these free weapon with the season two battle pass okay that's probably going to be the first weapon we get um how to unlock this weapon free weapon with the season two battle pass so that's good so far three weapons the only weapon we ain't gonna get unless we either buy it via store bundle for 19.99 or we complete all seven paths of the ronin event challenges okay so it really just depends on how hard it is to complete all seven of these uh ronin event challenges that's the only thing that really makes really much sense okay so it says also expect a new marksman rifle the tempest turret to be available at mid-season as well as a new lethal equipment piece the shuriken okay so we're getting some more e equipment what the hell is the shuriken if i'm saying that right okay um I, me personally what i think that is is you remember how they were saying up here that they have a guy that can shoot smoke bombs it might be a little mini smoke bomb um where's that guy at they, they said that they had a new guy coming in for warzone um that was going to basically this guy right here so it says as well as a mini smoke bomb to use for repositioning is this going to be another smoke bomb um hopefully it's not hopefully it's something that's going to be more useful but honestly um right now like i said they don't really you know they don't really tell you anything they just tell you it's going to be a new equipment so let's see um let's see uh now i might be wrong on that because i don't know if smoke bomb is even an equipment it's a tactical but um and, and claymores are lethal so i wonder what the equipment piece this shuriken is okay and it says remember each new weapon comes with a brand new set of camos to unlock for use across all your weapons expect well over a dozen new camos to be available to unlock by the end of season two okay okay so we got new camos coming okay okay we got new personal watercraft vehicle the jet ski okay um we got ronin returns at launch hopefully okay okay this is ronin skin at launch pretty sick scan boys i'm liking it i'm liking it most likely 
hopefully this is the this is the uh skin we get for purchasing the battle pass if you guys purchase the battle pass okay but most likely this skin is probably going to be the one let me see ronin is a ex special forces fighter yeah he's just coming he, it's just talking about his bio but hopefully this is the uh one that you get when you purchase the battle pass and not the one that you get when you complete it to level 100 okay um so let, let we'll find out though we'll find out but um looks like we got some playstation stuff so if you guys are a playstation player you're going to be getting this combat skin for oni pretty sweet skin that's pretty dope okay looks like we get the swords we get the red samurai outfit okay that's gonna be pretty that's gonna be pretty hot okay and then here we go we got prestige level ups now we can rank up to level 500 okay so man man now we're gonna be ranking up to level 500 500 250 players get ready to double it up because now we're gonna have 10 more we're gonna have five more prestige levels so we're gonna have prestige six unlocked at three prestige seven unlocked at 350 prestige eight unlocked at 400 prestige nine unlocked at 450 prestige 10 unlocked at 500 and these are new prestige emblems now there's only four of these emblems so i guess they're hiding the last prestige uh for like in the game so for, for for people to see in game i don't know why they didn't show it but um i guess this is prestige six seven eight and nine so looks pretty sweet um that that's good that they're adding this but honestly man like uh you're not really unlocking anything so i don't really understand what's the point i guess it just makes people feel like they're unlocking stuff um but honestly i mean i mean it's it's better than starting all over all over again and locking everything all over again i think uh if they did do that that would be real stupid and i think a lot less people will be playing this game or a lot more people would not be wanting to play this game um so it says each prestige rank also unlocks a new set of challenges if you guys know you get challenges uh based on every prestige rank in the game um let's see what else we got combat record leaderboard update okay so this is something that's pretty good uh let's see so it says warzone 2.0 combat records will come online as part of season two about damn time that game gets out of beta the statistics present in warzone 2.0 combat record will only be form what will only be from the activation date forward and will not include statistics from season one so from what this is saying all your combat records from season one does not count your combat records only count from season two now for people who like got the nukes or, or, or was able like to win three times to get the nukes and and uh basically have a lot of wins on their you know on their profile already this is kind of upsetting man why are they not wanting to give you those statistics from season one i mean come on that's kind of dumb but uh i mean i don't know i mean maybe it gives you guys a fresh start it'll just make i mean it'll probably just make your stats look even higher than what they are because you probably got a lot better from season one so i mean it is good in some ways but at the same time for people that are good at warzone who have a good combat record already who want to see their combat record and want other players to see it um i think it's kind of a waste i think it's stupid so the next thing it says furthermore leaderboards for Marvel for two multiplayer will be online as part of season two so finally we get the ability to view people's stats in Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer and Warzone. This should have been in the game, man. But this also shows me that this game in Season 1 was just a beta, man. Like, it, it wasn't a full game. It wasn't complete. It wasn't complete because why wasn't this in the game at launch? Were they really that worried about people being mad about them having a low KD? Were they really trying to hide people's KD from others? why because they think they're gonna get made fun of i mean so what you suck at the game man all you gotta do is play the game to get better you know that's all you gotta do you know like leaderboards is very important for strategy man you have to especially for a game like call of duty um you have to really kind of look at people's statistics in order to know what their play style is because if you're just going into a game and you just can only see their names you can only go off of if you played against those people before but if you have never seen those people which there's a lot of people playing call of duty if you haven't seen those people 
then you can't go off of anything, man. So you're just walking into the game blind. You don't understand their play style. You don't understand, like, their, uh, you know, you don't understand, like, their statistics. But, you know, like, that stuff is real important. It should be in the game, and I don't know why they want to sit there and soft it. They want to sit there and act like it's harming people for them to be viewed, uh, their, their leaderboards and stuff like that. So hopefully, um, the, when they say leaderboards, they do mean leaderboards and stats and statistics and everything like that as well man because honestly i'm not a fan of them waiting to tell you at the end of the match how many deaths you got and um also uh the um you know your stats you, nobody else can view your stats but you i think that shit's stupid man and half of the people don't even know how to view their stats there's so many people that i play with that don't even know that they can even view their stats because y'all sit there and hide them so man please let the stats be a lot more easier to access and let us be able to see each other's stats. We should be able to see each other's stats in the showcase. If we add somebody, I mean, even if they're even if we can't view enemy stats, we should be able to view people that we have friended. So like when we have a showcase or in our showcase, it should show all of our stats. Like, man, put that in the game, man. Out of combat overview, okay? So let's see what we got okay so it says get your patch notes here in addition in game get the latest patch notes from Arnold for two and warzone 2 on the call of duty website new swag for season two okay the call of duty shop is restocked check out the latest additions to look as fresh as you do in game upgrade to mom for two get rewarded in warzone 2 and dmz okay so honestly man for the free players that play warzone 2 and DMZ, from what I'm hearing, man, they're taking DMZ and they're making it to where you have to buy Modern Warfare 2 in order to play DMZ. Okay, now this is a damn letdown. It's, it's, it, it just shows you how greedy these mother. It shows you how greedy these people are, man. Like honestly, I mean, for them to sit there and say, yeah, Warzone's free. Now they want you to play. Now they want you to buy Mom for two to be able to get rewarded for Warzone two and DMZ. I can guarantee you that they're going to be cutting features out for players who don't have Mom for two and for players who just play Warzone two and DMZ. Because I honestly uh, do not understand why they're trying to make it to where you can't play DMZ if you do not have the Call of Duty Mom for two title. Stupid man. So they want you to pay seventy dollars for this broken ass game just to play a uh, warzone game mode that is supposed to be free with warzone and also on top of that they're wiping all the stats and they're wiping all the uh pro progression that you made in dmz for season two so when season two starts all those challenges and stuff that you completed they wiped them so you gotta start all over everything that you had keys and weapons and things like that you have to get them all over again who asked for that so here we go, man. We got centralized patch notes, okay? To better serve the global Call of Duty community, patch notes will also be available on the centralcalldutycom website at Call of Duty on starting on February 15th and localized in all languages, okay? Now, we're going to get into this, man. When they pat when they come out on February 15th, I best believe we're going to be making a video, so stay tuned, okay? Stay tuned. We're going to be going over the Call of Duty patch notes and seeing what the hell they fix, man. Because this is what's important. This is either going to be uh, game changing or game breaking to me. And also a lot of other players, man. If they do not fix the shit in this game that is the main reason of why people do not want to play this shit. Then I can honestly uh, tell you guys that this game is going to basically fall. And it's just going to be in hot water, man. Honestly, it's going to be a dead game. So hopefully on uh, February 15th, I don't know why they're waiting so long to release any of the patch notes, probably because they know they're probably going to be shit, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're fixing a lot of things. And I'm also going to be making a video on the top changes that I would want them to change on season two. OK, it's going to be titled uh, probably, um, you know, uh, main main changes I expect for season two, Mama for two. OK. So hopefully, man, um, you guys do like this video. Um, if you guys do like any of the content, um, definitely, man, leave a comment and, uh, you know, leave a like and subscribe. And uh, let me know what you guys think about all this new content that we got, man. It looks like we got some new game modes. It looks like we got 
a bunch of recycled stuff from like older games and stuff like that me honestly i personally think that this is just the same old stuff it's really nothing new it just seems like a bunch of like recycled uh content doesn't seem like they were really putting in any type of work the only thing that really you know got me like kind of hype is like the new warzone map um and also like uh ranked play and stuff like that but um it really like i said it really depends on how it plays out and if they can fix these uh cheaters and, and modders running around so honestly man this is pretty much everything that we have um all this stuff is basically basically just trying to tell you to buy a model for two uh buy the vault edition and stuff like that and um another thing man is that they're still saying that if you buy the vault edition you will still get the 50 battle tier skips for season two so um this is i think a, i think this is a trick man because honestly um it tells you when you have battle pass tokens that if you do not use those tokens before the next season those tokens will be automatically used okay so if you buy the if if, if let's just say you buy the the uh vault edition okay and uh, basically you basically buying the whole game again and you're just getting these skins right here which i don't think is worth it if you guys already got the game do not sit there and pay the extra 80 dollars for these fucking four skins man um but honestly um my thing is is with the 50 tier skips do you have to buy that when season two launches or can you buy it before season two and still have your tokens because if you already completed the battle pass like most people and you didn't buy the vault edition you still have those 50 battle tokens but in the battle pass menu when you look at the battle tokens if you still have any battle tokens left then it tells you that they'll be automatically spent before the next season so who the hell would want to buy this if you're going to basically throw away all of my 50 battle tokens that i paid almost 100 basically 100 dollars for so honestly man i don't think it's something that they explain too good okay i think it is like a scam i think you guys should be very weary of that so if you guys are planning on buying the vault edition i would just recommend that you wait until season two actually launches so that you can basically know that you're going to be getting your 50 battle tokens okay but other than that, that's it for the video. I'm about to go back and go watch some Sarah J. And I'll see you motherfuckers in the next one. Peace out.